Worldview and Belief. My name is Paul Marco. Today we present a special report aimed at our listeners in South America, and especially Ecuador. But the whole world needs to know about what happened to this tiny country and the people victimized. This is a representation of a radio program made on June 6th on the Power Hour radio show. The link is below. After this podcast, please take time to listen to this whole broadcast and visit the website of their special guest, Dr. James McCanny, also listed below. Remember, knowledge is power. Spread this knowledge far and wide. Now listen to what really happened in beautiful Ecuador in April. Thank you so much for joining us. Professor James McKinney is our guest today. We're going to be talking about earthquakes, natural and unnatural events that take place uh, in the weather uh, in the world. And it seems that whenever you're on the show, or I know you do your own radio show, which uh, I want you to encourage people to listen to your show also, James. But it seems like when you go out there and tell what's happening, there are people that attack you, and it's amazing. I mean, it's almost like they can, you know, like a laser. They get to you to try and uh, negate what you've said, which they don't do a very good job, but maybe to the untrained eye, not the power hour listener. People might believe that. But, you know, obviously you're on to something, which is why you get attacked so regularly. Uh, yeah, especially like with the Ecuador deal. Um, you know, let me explain something. I have 50 topics I could cover. And, and not deal with issues that are political or of world nature, you know, and, uh, for example, man-made events like the earthquakes in Ecuador. I have plenty to talk about. I don't, and I got accused, some joker accused me of making this up. I happened to be there. I was 200 miles from the epicenter when it, the first major earthquake happened. I saw, I have my own personal, I, I have a master's degree in physics and, and from Tulane University, it's in nuclear physics. My medical courses related to that degree are at the Tulane Medical School in nuclear medicine. I know what nuclear radiation poisoning is and what it looks like. And there were literally everybody had it in this northern region, north of, in the state of Esmeralda. And, you know, it's, it's something that when I report things, uh, I, it's because I went there and saw it myself. It's not because I read it in a book or somebody else's Yeah, somebody's page. blog. Yeah, somebody's or, blog. Or happened to call a buddy of mine who happens to be somewhere, you know, and some guy said, well, he called a buddy in Ecuador, and he said, well, he did, wasn't aware of that. Well, that would be like somebody in France calling up a guy in California and say, I heard something happened in the United States, and the event was in New York, you know. Uh, Ridiculous. Uh, well, but anyway, yeah, you're right. I get this this uh, ridiculous chatter, uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of it is due to people trying to use my name to bring attention to themselves. Exactly, exactly. And it's pretty obvious that that is what has happened because it's not educated post, certainly, not like yours anyway. Well, let's talk about what's happening globally, and especially in Latin America. I know you wanted to apprise us of what's happening in, in South America, and I appreciate that very much. Let's start off like uh, with Honduras. Uh, yeah, Honduras, uh, the last thing Hillary Clinton did as Secretary of State, or I wouldn't say the last, but one of the last, is they armed a bunch of generals in Honduras, and they overthrew the uh, democratically elected president. Uh, and now there's a junta running uh, Honduras, and they're killing people in the streets. They're just hunting down anybody that was politically against the United States in uh, what was a really a, a fair government previously and literally shooting them, some of them shooting them in the backs, uh, and these people, uh, they're turning it into a slave state, like a banana republic. Uh, that's already happened in Guatemala, Brazil. Uh, they're going after the elected president there. As you know, they're going to try and oust him during the Olympics coming up here and make a big international scene out of it. Uh, Brazil, that's uh, happening there. Ecuador, the uh, rods from God earthquake. Uh, Ecuador and the United States do not have very good relationships. After the earthquake, Obama did not give a single dime to Ecuador in aid, not a dime. Whoa. What he did was he sent the World Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank down there to try and get them to sign loans, which clearly they would have to default on eventually, which would give the IMF uh, control of the uranium deposits, which are in southern Ecuador. That's what they're after. So, uh, you know, Venezuela, there's a uh, commodities coup going on where they're destroying the economy. The commodities, they have basically an economic blockade on Venezuela, causing the people to be in the streets waiting in long lines, uh, writing numbers on people's uh, arms so that they have to stand in line 
to get things like toilet paper and cleaning supplies and food. This you know, is being orchestrated. Add, yeah, it's being orchestrated by the U.S. And let me just address that just for a second because the news is, oh, things are awful in Venezuela. Oh, this is horrible what Maduro is doing. Well, it's the blockade the United States has done on them, but they don't mention that because they're so busy wanting to know what Hillary said about Trump or Trump said about Hillary 24-7. So there is no coverage of these issues and certainly not coverage in an unbiased fashion. Oh, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's horrific. And, you know, what's going on in Latin America right now, Bolivia, Tom, also under attack, they are going after uh, the World Bank, in brief, has lost footing in Latin America. And it's due to Obama sleeping and playing golf. You know, their man in Washington was not doing their job. Uh, and Hillary didn't do much better um, it, it being Secretary of State, but they have really lost a lot of footing. Ecuador is making deals with Russia, with Bolivia, and with China, dealing with the uranium there, and that's what the whole Rise from God earthquake thing has been about. Uh, the three came, that came in on May 18th were visible. Everybody in western Ecuador saw these that were in the northern part of Ecuador. Three of them came in. Uh, Why don't you explain for the new listener that doesn't know Rise from God, just give a brief de description, if you would, please. Well, they started out as a kinetic weapon around 2002, and it didn't take them long. They come in from outer space. It looks like a Gatling gun in satellite in outer space, and they fire these down. And uh, because they're a non, they're, they don't have any inertial uh, uh, propulsion system, they just fire them. So as they come down, they go horizontal because they're speeding up. This is just orbital dynamics, and so they come in horizontal. And uh, the original ones were kinetic energy weapons like they used in Tianjin, China, to blow up that armament factory there. Um, but now they have them so they have a penetrating warhead. And these were developed back in the early 2000s because Saddam Hussein had built, remember when he built these big bunkers that were 20 layers of cement deep, and, and they couldn't get to them. They didn't have any device that could penetrate through 10 layers of hardened cement. There's, these were designed and built by the Germans. So they developed these penetrating warhead type of things that would come in from outer space, and that's where the, the technology that they're using against Ecuador, well, that's where this started. So the, the device comes down, it's basically an arrow, it's a big tungsten tube or metal tube, and when it hits, it blows a second charge, just like an armor-piercing tip, it blows a second charge which penetrates the first layer, when that hits the next layer, that sends off another charge, and so they have these that are conventional warheads, they have nuclear warheads in these, and what they used against Ecuador were nuclear warheads. And the first one on April 16th went off prematurely. You could see the double blast in these uh, security cameras. And I, I, with calculating the difference between the, the flashes, I calculated that the, that the nu first nuclear blast went off no more than 500 meters deep. So it blew this big dust cloud up in the, the sky, and that was, must have hit some rock or something that was not planned and blew a big dust cloud of highly ionized radiation into the air and that's what these people were, became radiation poisoned all over that northern sector, northwest sector of uh, Ecuador. But uh, anyway, uh, no, the, um, what's going on is they are, Ecuador especially because of the uranium, but they are going after all of these South American countries now to pressure them into somehow coming back into the fold of the World Bank. Cuba is one of the only countries in the world that has its own bank. Uh, and they d deal with, uh, uh, you know, the inter internationally, they do all their business outside of the World Bank and the U.S. dollar. And so, um, anyway, the, uh, uh, they're trying desperately, but all these countries know what's going on uh -huh. uh, in Bolivia. You know, I just, I just, let me just say that I wonder how many of these have U.S. intervention and involvement. They're all. Oh, Every all one of them. Have been, I mean, them. think of the people's lives that have been destroyed. The, the people's lives that are, I mean, no longer be the same because of this so-called desire to want to get the U.S.'s, um, whatever it is they want out of that country, whether it be a resources or people or money or whatever. This is incredible. This is criminal. These people's lives are destroyed for the sake of the U.S. Um, attempt to try and uh, dissolve the leaders or dissolve the country. Yeah. Yeah, and the U.S., you have to understand, is spearheading for the World Bank. And this is all the control of international corporations with com which come under the Rothschild umbrella. The World Bank, the IMF, the Interdevelopment uh, Bank, uh, the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, all of these are, are trying to strong-arm these countries into... And, and now the, the thing is, all these countries know this. Uh, you know, Gaddafi in Libya had a beautiful country, they destroyed it. And, I mean, that was under the watchful eye of Hillary Clinton. That's what all the emails are about. 
you know, and, and everybody's trying to concentrate on, well, did she hide emails? Well, the question is, what was in the emails? It was all about destroying Libya for the world. Absolutely. Bank. Absolutely. The Power Hour, thank you for joining us. We're talking to James McCanny today. The subject is uh, what's going on in the world, what's going on in South America. And now we see that the U.S., who has been in there with their, quote-unquote, covert troops, with their terrorists, with whatever, it's just everything is crumbling in South America. Now, do we have to believe that it's just all these people in South America are just innately not very smart, can't run their own countries? No. It's because of the intervention of the U.S. military, their covert operations, their mercenaries, and whatever. So we've been talking to uh, our guest today, Professor James McKinney, about what happened in Honduras, and that's, you know, the, all the marks of destroying the country. Venezuela, with the uh, uh, embargo against them, they can't get anything in there. And Ecuador, United States obviously not very fond of Ecuador. What is happening there in the government? Are they trying to... Um, what, what's happening in the leadership of Ecuador, James? Uh, <clears throat> Correa, President Correa is in his third term, very popular with the local people. He has built roads. He has uh, beautiful uh, infrastructure in the country. And uh, the people love him because he's doing for the people. And that's what Chavez did in Venezuela, in Maduro. He's turning the oil money into giving it to the people. To They go in and paint towns. Um, they, they bring a whole crew of people into a town, very poor town, to give them food, to give them, you know, uh, so they can grow their own food. They paint the streets, the houses, you know, do cement work. So, you know, fill potholes, everything that, and then when they leave, you look at the town, it's beautiful. This is what they're doing. The people love him there. And they know that they're under attack. They know what's going on. The people are standing in line. And the, the Western news is like, oh, there's all kinds of problems here. But no, that's the, that's the fabricated news. Uh, you cannot believe anything you hear in the press in the United States right. at all. That's right. And now, what about the radiation damage <clears throat> that occurred there? How many people became ill? Do we know anything about that? Yeah, the hospitals were literally overflowing, and, and now this is, like I say, north of the blast zone, uh, and uh, which was on that nub that sticks out in the state of Esmeralda, is northwestern Ecuador. And so the, the, the dust cloud carried northwards and northeasterly. There's probably 100,000 people in that area uh, easily, you know, because it's a, it's a fairly densely popula populated mm -hmm. area. Uh, so that's the estimate. If people were in their houses are very much, uh, you have to understand the housing in these countries is open. There's uh, open windows, the windows don't close tightly, but there's some houses that are better than others. So if people were in the houses during the time when this dust cloud moved through, some of them didn't have it quite so severe. But you have the majority of people the, that had, you know, the uh, radiation burns on the skin. And what happens is the dust lands on the skin and, it, and it's ionizing radiation. It, it causes a red burn and so they had them all over their skin. Some people went into the ocean to try and clean it off and the dust covered it was floating in the ocean. And so when they came out, they had it all over them. It was worse. The drugstores sold out of salves and ointments and creams and people were putting that on, which was the wrong thing to do because you want to get it off. But they didn't have any clean water because of the earthquake. There was no mm. infrastructure services. And so, uh, you know, literally, I would estimate uh, uh, part of my education. I've been in Los Alamos National Laboratory as an invited speaker. When I was there, I would sit in with the high energy bomb group. And what they were doing was they were doing radiation calculations based on bombs and nuclear uh, fallout and uh, high altitude X ray radiation from nuclear bombs. I mean, so this is part of my background. I know exactly mm -hmm. what this is all about. So, so the diagnosis, if you will, or saying that it was, uh, in fact, radiation from something, from rods from God or whatever, had to be something that was created, then it, it was made based on the symptoms that the people were experiencing. Is that is how they knew? Did they do any kind of radiation detection or monitoring at the time? No, and this is something I did myself. The, what they told the people is that this was due to dead people or that they had chikungunya, which is a form of dengue. And these symptoms have nothing to do with dengue or, or oh, other... Oh, really? Yeah, that, and, they, and they actually told some of the people, some little kids told me, they said that the doctors told them that's because there were a lot of dead people. Well, in, in that area, they, there were not a lot of dead people, very few, in fact. The death toll was farther south. Is there anything else about Ecuador that we need to know before we move on, James? Well, they're struggling. Uh, they're in for the ride of their life because Correa, the election is coming up here. He's not going to be able to run for another term simply because uh, uh, it, 
it's like the the uh, um, the way the uh, politics run here. I mean, he's not going to be effective for other reasons. But the question is now the regime change. The U.S. will be in there trying to create all kinds of problems. Uh, the CIA will be trying to fix the election uh, so they get their man in, in uh, Quito. Uh, uh -huh. So, it, yeah, Ecuador is in for a real bad time, and so are all these other countries, and they know it. These people okay. know it, and it creates me... a lot of hatred for the United States. Oh, I yeah. That. I mean, I don't know why anybody has any respect for the United States. You know, they don't. They want to come here, but they want to stop us from doing what we're doing in their countries. Okay, that's it. Now you know. Spread this video far and wide. The ball is in your court.